Welcome back to the House of Commons for the uh, one last time, I think. We're in the dying moments of this session of Parliament. And, uh, you know, it's been an interesting time. Only a few months ago, the Conservatives were rising in the polls. Now they're falling. Only a few months ago, the Liberals had just gotten a brand new leader that Canadians were pretty unfamiliar with. Now Stéphane Dion is becoming more of a household name. So the whole political environment is changing. And as we get set to go back to our constituents face for a couple of months, one must reflect on actually what this session of Parliament accomplished. Because we're not just here to, you know, soak up your money. We're here to do stuff for Canada. And one of my favorite colleagues is with me now, Marlene Jennings, is Member of Parliament for Notre Dame de, Notre -Dame de Grasse La Chine Very in Montreal. Good, and she is also the justice critic. So yes. I thought I would ask Marlene, in terms of like these guys, the Conservatives, are the law and order party. They campaigned on that. They said they were going to deliver this safer environment for yes. Canadians. Let's have a little scorecard here on what actually was accomplished to make Canadians safer because of this government. Well, I have, or to, not. Say, I have to say, this government is sort of like the key, keystone cops, you know, when in terms of justice. Um, there are several bills that they brought forth that will do absolutely nothing actually make Canadians safer because all it does is codify. Let me give you an example. As we speak, someone who is charged with a criminal act which involves the use of a firearm does not get bail. Period. It's not because it's, it's in the criminal code. They don't get bail. The Conservatives made this big brouhaha that they were going to bring in legislation to make sure that there is no bail or it's your, you can't get bail easily when you're criminal act. All it does is put in the law what was already the practice. So they tell Canadians they're going to make them safer, but in fact, it doesn't change anything on the ground, because already people were not getting bail if they had firearms involved, hmm. period. Secondly, let's look at the dangerous offender. Dangerous offender system is a system that liberals put into place back in the mid-90s. It's proven to be an extremely good system. People who are um, convicted of heinous crimes, the most heinous crimes with violence and that, can go through a process where they are ultimately designated a dangerous offender and are incarcerated indefinitely. The problem with the system is that the Crown does not have to make an application. The person, the, the individual could have been charged and convicted 15 times. There's nothing that requires the Crown to make an application. The Conservatives Bill C-27 doesn't make it mandatory for the Crown to apply for a dangerous offender designation when the individual has been convicted at least three times. It doesn't require it at all. I've, I've proposed and the Liberals have proposed that in fact on a third conviction for the most serious offenses there's an automatic remand and assessment mm -hmm. that would take place. And the Attorney Generals are liking it. Mm. That's just one example right. of how they're kind of like bumbling keystone cops. They don't do their homework. But you know, Marlene, I, I sit in this question period with you every day, and day after day I hear the Prime Minister and others stand up and say, you Liberals are soft on crime, you're soft on criminals, you hate the police, you know, you're against everything that has to do with authority in this country, you're not standing up for the people's rights. And how do you counter that? Is this just political spin then? It is political spin. It's sloganeering. It has nothing to do with the facts. I just talked about the dangerous offender system. It's liberals who put that into place. If we look at, for instance, mandatory minimum penalties for criminal um, acts, criminal offenses committed with firearms, guess who put that into the criminal code? Liberals. If we look at long-term offender system, guess who put that into the criminal code? Liberals. I mean, liberals have shown that we want safer communities, we want Canadians to be safe, we want effective justice. Effective justice is not based on political sloganeering. It's not based on blustering, we're going to get tough on crime. It's based on actually taking the measures which will ensure that the police have the resources to go after the uh, suspected criminals and catch them quickly, 
that the Crown has the resources to be able to try people who have been charged quickly, that there are sufficient judges in place. Those are mm -hmm. commitments that the Liberals have made. The Conservatives have not. They promised in, 2000, in the 2006 election that they would put more police officers on the ground, 2,500. They have not given the provinces one penny to hire more police okay, officers. Okay, last question, last yes. question. Guns, okay? Yes. We got this issue with guns right now because obviously people in urban environments say guns are horrible, we don't want any of them. Sure. You got the conservatives saying, how about the farmers and the duck hunters? It's a big issue, right? It and is. we're all going to struggle with this. And whether you're for guns or against guns or want to ban them or restricted use, no one's going to be happy with the outcome. All right? What is your preference? My, I like the fact that we have a firearm registry. I like Canada's gun control legislation. What I, however, would like to see, two things. One, that we put more resources to ensure that our police can better work together to tackle the issue of I illegally imported firearms. That's a major problem. It is. And secondly, I would like to see us put more resources and efforts into educating people about the whole issue of firearms. Because you're right, there is a certain level of urban-rural divide, and I think that on the rural side, people have to maybe better understand what the issues are yeah. for urban dwellers, and urban dwellers need right. to be more sympathetic to the life of a rural dweller. Okay. And uh, what are you doing this summer? Oh, God. I'm going to be working, obviously, like yeah. you and like everyone else. Um, I'm going to try and do a little bit of traveling across the country to meet with stakeholders, police associations, a crown, crown attorneys associations, defense attorney associations, attorney generals of the provinces, community organizations that work on the group to talk about justice issues and talk about the liberal uh, justice uh, strategy, which most people are finding to be very, very good and believe that it, it will actually make Canadians uh, safer. And maybe some and no, time with the family. No drinks with little umbrellas in them or anything? No. I don't drink. I don't believe her. Okay, I, I like champagne. Ah, now it's coming out. <laughs> Marlene Jennings, thank you for being with us and thank you for watching MPTV.